Hey guys, today's video is not a video about gardening or farming. It's totally political, so if you want to skip this, and I know a lot of people watch my stuff who might not agree with my political views, and that's totally fine. I'm not offended by that. I'm totally comfortable with helping people and even having friends of people that don't share my political views. Nothing personal. No, no harm done, so you can skip this one if you don't want to hear anything political. But I felt compelled to put this video out. This is an interview with Maxime Bernier, who is the leader of the People's Party of Canada. And um, he's the only, the, the People's Party of Canada is the only free market, small government party in Canada. At least that's participating in the major debates. Which is kind of exciting, actually, that we have a person who has these ideas, much like the ideas of Ron Paul, for those of you who are still with me, uh, in the US, Ron Paul didn't win any elections, but his ideas got out there and they gained a lot of traction because they're popular, because people like the idea of freedom. And that's why people come to the West, is they want more freedom. And we, we still have some of that freedom in the West, but we're losing it really quickly. And in Canada, it's much like many other places, um, everybody's moved to the left. Amongst the political parties, at least the mainstream ones in, in Canada, the Liberal Party, the Conservative Party, the NDP, and the Green Party, which are now actually amongst the mainstream parties, it's taken them a long time to get there, they all moved to the left. And some of them moved further than others. The Liberals actually went way left. The Conservatives moved to the left. They're no longer on the right. They are, and when I say left and right, I'm referring to big government versus small government and personal freedom. So totalitarianism to libertarianism. Everybody moved to the left. Everybody moved to totalitarianism. And it's been an absolute disaster with us here in Canada with the Liberal Party. I, I, I really strongly believe they will not win the next election because they've done such a terrible job. And Justin Trudeau is an absolute uh, disaster. He's a spoiled little brat who's never really had to work a day in his life and he lives in an aristocratic family that um, is a political class and uh, he likes to promise the world to all of the proletariat type folks but then he goes and supports big big crony government, big crony corporations and they're even getting busted on some of this stuff themselves. So they're gonna be gone. The question is who's gonna come in? The NDP, who uh, actually grew up in a very political type household surrounded by people in the NDP, and um, they've just gone crazy. They used to be a party that was for workers and working class people, but now they're just a party that hate the rich and hate the productive and have fully, uh, fully jumped on the identity politics, political correctness bandwagon. And uh, so have the Green Party, which is the party that I used to mostly support. Um, when they were mostly about environmental issues, I was all on board. And then they also jumped on the identity politics and political correctness wagon. And I can't stand that stuff. I just, I just can't stand it. Um, so Maxime Bernier was a person who was, who, who was in the Conservative Party and he left. He almost won the Conservative leadership and if he would have done that, perhaps I wouldn't be making this video and perhaps we would have Maxime Bernier most likely as our next Prime Minister but there is a chance he could win with this party that he just started, which is called the People's Party of Canada. And um, yeah, this video is an interview with him. We're talking about some of the, the, um, the ideas or some of the issues that are important to me as a farmer, a small business person, as an entrepreneur. We're talking about some of these ideas. And in Canada, it's just become so polarized and because everybody's moved to the left, we're punishing more and more people who work hard. And I've worked really hard over the last 10 years to get to a place where I can now afford a, a little bit of the creature comforts that maybe the upper middle class can afford. I came from very humble upbringings and never had anybody help me with anything. I, I put myself through school, I put myself through my own hard work for everything that I've ever done. And now we have a government that wants to continuously punish the people who work hard. So people like Justin Trudeau and people in the sort of aristocratic political class who are sheltered from the uh, type of taxation that people like me have to pay, they can virtue signal about 
this or that or the other and uh, none of this really applies to them but for me people who um, work hard and have to pay an exorbitant amount of taxes we get punished for our hard work and it's just not sustainable and I used to be a person who I know I'm kind of ranting on this but I, I just kind of want to set this up a little bit but I used to be a person who was mostly con concerned with environmental issues and I still am very much so but what I've seen happen in the environmental movement is this politicization of it. It's the, the whole environmental movement has been completely politicized and to support climate change, uh, government supporting climate change and all that is not really to show any support for the environment, it's to basically just send billions of dollars to bureaucrats in Europe. And I don't see how that's going to do anything positive for our environment. Um, because governments just waste insane amounts of money on absolutely nothing. I've taken a lot of steps in my life personally, and you can see and you know from the work that I do, to be a steward of the earth. And uh, I don't think politicians should have anything to do with it because politicians just waste, waste money because they don't have skin in the game. This is the problem with politics. And this is my hope for somebody like Maxime Bernier is politicians don't have to pay for the repercussions of their bad mistakes. Whereas an entrepreneur like me, I have to pay for every single mistake I make. It's costly. And this, when you, when you have to pay for your mistakes and you have to have your own skin in the game, this makes you, the, makes the decisions that you make very calculated and somewhat conservative because you pay for those mistakes. Politicians don't. Politicians can throw billions of dollars this way or that way and if the program screws up, they go, oh, let's just put more money at it. So they throw more money onto the fire. And this is getting to a point where the personal debt that Canadians have topped with the debt that the government has that we're all liable for is getting absolutely unsustainable. And I'm more worried about that unsustainability than I am environmental sustainability, particularly with how the environmental movement has become so politicized that now we have this culture of dehumanizing the other right so if it's if it's in the environmental movement and you question the politics of of climate change and i'm not talking about climate change i'm talking about the politics of climate change if you question the politics of climate change you're a climate change denier we dehumanize the other right and when you dehumanize the other you create hatred and you can justify violence and all kinds of other injustices to that other and you see this in political correctness and it's, it's the same old thing. And the irony is with the political correctness crowd is that when you call somebody a transphobe or a Nazi or whatever, you dehumanize that person. And then you can justify violence towards them. And you can see this in all kinds of videos if you go online of, of radical left um, activists attacking and doing physical harm to people because we've dehumanized them. And it's ironic because the social justice movement and the political correct crowd they really like to talk about justice and they really like to talk about justice for marginalized groups but then they go ahead and marginalize people by dehumanizing them because they don't identify with their political viewpoints so it's to it's totally hypocritical and it's why i staunchly oppose anything to do with political correctness and maxime bernier in this interview he's the only politician in canada at least in the mainstream politicians that stands up to the bullying the cry, cry bullies of the political correct crowd and I think that takes a lot of guts and I respect a person who's willing to put themselves on the line and take the brunt end of the the sort of violent rhetoric that's going to come his way and it already is and you see it in the mainstream media the CBC refers to people like Maxime Bernier as alt-right then again dehumanizing and marginalizing these ideas and I got to hand it to the guy. He's got a lot of courage for coming out and saying what he has to say. So this interview is with him. We're talking about some ideas that are important to me. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hey Max, thanks for having me. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here. It's, it's, a, it's a privilege. Uh, hey, it's a privilege to have you. And and um, you know, as you know, I I'm a farmer, an entrepreneur, and I make videos about this. And we're at a state in this country where it is getting harder and harder to do business, especially as a small business. And we have 
we have things like this new cannabis industry that's coming up and it's hard to get in that game. It's becoming a big racket. What do you think about, like, I guess what's your position or what's your, what does the People's Party of Canada want to do about that? Like, what do you... Absolutely, you're right that for small business owner, the government is always there, regulation, taxation. And so the goal is to have a limited government interval. Well, when you have a smaller government, you have you don't have government intervention in your day-to-day life, and I think it's important. So our platform, when I'm speaking about smaller government and limited government, for me it is not a buzzword, it is not a slogan, it's something that we believe in, and we need to do bold reforms in Ottawa if we want to achieve that. Yeah. We have a full platform with a lot of reform, and we'll be sure to balance the budget in two years, and giving you entrepreneurs your money in your pocket. What we can do for small business, first of all, having a flat tax on small business, 10%, no more corporate welfare. Flat tax is in no progressive income tax? Yeah, no progressive. Wow. Only one tax rate. 10% wow. for small, medium sized business and big business. So it is fair for everybody. 10% right. flat tax. What we will do also, capital gains tax in Canada. It is huge for a small business. So when you making money and you 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 making money on the stock market or you are selling your small business, you have a capital gains. You you have to pay a tax. We won't have any capital gains tax in no Canada. No capital gains tax. Well. So that's the important. And third, for a small business, when you invest in equipment, uh, you will be able to depreciate that in one year. So that will give you more That's cash huge. flow. Yes. That will give you a better cash flow. And if you have a better cash flow, you'll have a better value for your for your business. So that we call that accelerated capital accelerated capital cost allowance for small business. So everybody will be able to depreciate their investment in one year. Wow. So that will help. So that's concrete uh, policies for small business owner. And I think uh, we must we must believe in you guys. Mm -hmm. You are the one who create wealth and job in this country. That's, that's not right. me. That's yeah. not the politician. I that's won't right. do anything. Uh, you are the one, and that's why government must be on your side. That's right. And that that's the uh, that's the illusion a lot of people think is that that governments create wealth. Governments do not create wealth. No, no. They just take it. Yeah. And, 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 and people, entrepreneurs, create wealth. One of the other issues here, for, we're in British, British Columbia right now, we're in the West. One of the big things about us Westerners is we're tired of working our butts off to send all this money to Quebec and Ontario. And this has been a big issue for a long time, but even the Conservatives you don't, don't touch that. The, the, nobody touches that. The equalization payments thing has got to be one of the biggest rackets in this country. What's your guys' position on, on equalization? Uh, you're absolutely right. The conservative, the liberal, all the traditional political parties, they don't want to touch that because they are pandering. They want to have votes in Quebec. They, have to want, they want to have votes in Atlantic Canada. I'm seeing the same thing in English and in French. What I'm saying, the equalization formula, it is part of the constitution. You cannot abolish it. But the amount of money that you're giving, it's a decision that, that, that has to be taken by the federal government. So we own that. We can take that decision. So in our platform, what we want to do, we want to be less generous. We want to change the equalization formula to give the right incentive to my own province, to Quebec, to develop their own natural resources, yeah. to develop their own economy. So right now, they don't have any incentive to do that. So Quebec received equalization money for the last 50 years. So it's a poverty trap, and we must change that. But we must have the courage to say that in Quebecers. And I say that, I said that. <laughs> I said that uh, 10 years ago, that I'm not proud to be a Quebecers when we receive equalization money. The goal in Quebec and in Atlantic Canada must be to receive zero equalization money. Like that, Quebec and Atlantic Canada, <laughs> they're going to be richer. They're going to be a rich province. Because they'll build it up from the ground they'll, up. They'll build it up. So we must change the equalization formula. It's a commitment. And at the same time, being less generous and give a kind of a transition period for these provinces to adjust yeah so speaking about pandering and all that we are in an era of absolute political correctness yeah and identity politics I turned on the CBC which I was a darling of the CBC for many years I used to be I used to be on the radio all the time I'd been on C, uh, provincial television CBC when I kind of came out of the closet as a libertarian all of a sudden it's hands-off but I'm not kidding you Maxim 
every day I turn on the CBC, and I do when I drive my daughter around, I turn it on to hear what's going on. Every time I turn on the CBC, it's identity politics. Why, why, why are you doing that? Why, why am I subjecting myself yeah, to it? Well, yeah. I, I, that's a good question. I think I, think I want to know, I keep my, a, a finger on the pulse of what's actually yeah, happening. But I'm teasing you. I know. But, but what, can you, what are you guys going to do about this? Because the CBC is essentially weaponizing political correctness, and I'm, as a taxpayer, paying for it to propagandize my kids, my neighbor's kids, and all this fear-mongering about white supremacy and and oh th these kids aren't getting vaccinated or whatever it's propaganda not stuff what what can you guys actually do as a party to stop this insanity it is very very simple cut the cbc budget and ask the cbc to be like the pbs in the state to raise their own money if they're so right? good they would be able to raise money that's right so that's our policy we're the only political party who has a strong platform on that we must cut the CBC budget and telling them, if you want to raise money, do like PBS in the state. Yeah. And so that's it. Yeah. You know, we want the media to be independent from the government. We don't want the media to be dependent yes. from the government. So yeah. Justin Trudeau, he wants to do a kind of a bailout of the media. So give him- 600 million or yeah, something? Yeah, 600 million dollars. So we, will want, we won't do that. The media must be independent and for the CBC, we just need to cut their budget. It's simple like that. Wow. So, yeah, another big issue right now, you know, we're this is on YouTube. We're, we're reaching a digital audience and we're in this new era of communication and, and media, as you are well aware. Justin Trudeau and his cronies of top corporate CEOs of social media companies just met in Paris to talk about how they censor hate speech, right? And who defines hate speech? We don't know. Maybe Justin Trudeau defines it. Yes. And I'm I'm scared about that. What what can what can we do about? I mean, is this is this a platform? Is this something that you guys want to put into your platform that yes. we have free speech? Period. Not free speech, but yeah. Is is, is the People's Party of Canada yes. behind absolute free speech? Yes, absolutely. And we'll have we'll have something uh, concrete in our platform in two weeks from now about that. And you're absolutely right. Who will define what is hate speech? That's the big question. And when you start that, it's a dangerous path. So yeah. we we like freedom. We're for freedom. We're for free speech. And uh, actually, yes, we'll have something on our platform. I'm working on that with people from the social media to be sure to have the right platform. We need to promote free speech. And I need social media because it is not, the, as a politician, it is not the CBC. Uh, it's very difficult no, for I'm... me to be uh, at the CBC, uh, at the political shows, but I need, and I'm using like you, the social media to promote our platform, to promote our values. So I will be very vigilant uh, concerning that file. That's, that's good to know. Okay, what, one last question, and it's something that's been on my mind for a long time. I'm a farmer. I work with farmers all around the world, lots in Canada, lots in the US, and you've spoken about supply management for a long time. Even when you were in the Conservative Party, this was a thing that you, that you talked about. Supply management is, a, is, a, is cronyism. It's, yeah. it's, it, however, and I, I think I brought this up to you earlier today, but I, I guess I, I want people to know and, and hear your thoughts on this because I have a question regarding supply management. And, and the one issue is, is that we do have this dairy cartel that protects and and and, and locks in prices. Not and only not only dairy, dairy, poultry, and eggs. And eggs. That that's right. And so it's protection racket. And but the the, the problem is if we were to cut that and the U.S is completely subsidizing their agriculture, how do we keep Compete. our farmers competitive? Absolutely, that's a great question. So you're right about that. It, it's a cartel, it's a huge cartel, but these producers are producing good products. We want them to export. We want them to be able to export in the US and all over the globe. But we want them to be competitive also. What we need to do, we need to buy their quota, buy back their quota. That will cost maybe $3 billion, around 3 to $5 billion. We'll do that the first year. They will have the money. They will have the money to be more productive, to reinvest in their in their in, in their facilities to improve their productivity. We won't open the border. They will we will give them maybe five years transition period. So they will have time to reinvest. And also when we will open the border for foreign products, 
these products must respect our legislation and regulation concerning healthcare and safety regulation. I'll give you an example. In the US, some producers are giving hormone to their cows yeah. to produce. Yeah. Our producers here, they don't have the right to do that. Right. They don't have the right. So if the if the US producers want to export in Canada, they will have to follow our regulation. They will have to change their way that they produce. They will have to stop giving hormones to their cows if they want to export. So that's important also. So tomorrow, all the milk from the US won't come in Canada because the majority of their production, it's with hormones and we don't uh, accept that in Canada. So I guess, I guess in a nutshell, if if they're going to want to compete in Canada, they're going to have to play by their rules, meaning that they're going to have to change their practices, thus bringing them to a more equal playing field. Absolutely. Because they can't send up loaded products full of hormones and expect to compete in a So I, I, I guess it makes sense. I mean, yeah. They will have to follow uh, our legislation. We are a sovereign country. So everything that our producers are doing, the U.S. must do the same thing if they want to sell here. I'll give you an example with our beef. A couple of years ago, Canada wasn't able to sell beef, beef in Japan because uh, our Canadian uh, producer, they were giving all to, to, uh, to the cows. cows. And now, now they don't do that anymore and, and they are able to export in Japan. So that's normal. We, we, we're a sovereign country and uh, if you want to export these kind of products in our country, you must respect our legislation and regulation on, on, on safety. Okay, okay. Okay, one last question, because this is, this is a big one, is we have people literally walking across the border in Canada from the U.S. and 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 not not too far from where we are. You can literally just walk into the U.S. There's no there's no border here, and and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's a bad. I mean, it's not like our neighbors in the U.S. are really a, a threat to us, where we feel we have to build a wall or something like that. But I was in I was in Quebec just last summer. And I had I was staying in Hemingford, Quebec. I had a hotel booked, and we got booted out of the hotel because they had to make room for all of these RCMP beer grats and immigrants that were just walking across the border and then letting them in. So it's it's a it's a it's a touchy issue because people like to the CBC especially love to load it and call anybody who says there's something wrong with this racist, right? You know, you know the game. Um, you know what. What do we do about this? Because we want, like, Canada is built on immigrants, right? Yeah, yeah. We want people to we come want to, here. We right? want to help the real refugees. And right now, it's not fair. These people are jumping the queue. You know, there's real refugees that are waiting in refugees' camp in other countries that want to come here. And these people that are crossing the border in my own province in Quebec, 40% of them, and it is not me who's saying that, it is the Department of Immigration. They said that 40% of them will have, will have to be deported in, in two years because they're not real refugees. So we must stop that. And the way to do that is it is to sit with the American, with President Trump, and fix that loophole. And the way to, to fix the loophole is to declare our borders um, uh, every, not only the official point of entry, but all our borders, an official point of entry, and like that, if they are, they want to cross our border, they they will have to. They're coming to a country where they're not prosecuted, so they don't, they won't have the right to come to Canada yeah. because your life is not in danger when you are in the state of New York and you cross the border to come to Canada. That's right. That's right. And is there any talk about? I mean. Uh, as a farmer, I talk to farmers all around the world, and there is a serious. And I know that I know your your policy on wanting to get out of foreign entanglements and, and, and stuff like that. And I totally agree with all that. However, there's a big problem in South Africa right now. I'm not sure if you're aware of what's happening to Africana farmers down there. That are literally the government is a Marxist collectivist government that's saying. Black farmers can go and take white farmers' land. And I have talked to young men, farmers, guys in their 20s, that literally have been living on this farm their entire lives, working it, and now they have nothing. Their parents have been murdered. Is there any thing where we can say, let's, like, those would be perfect immigrants in a country like this? Yeah. Is, is, that, is, that a, is that a discussion at all with you, with you guys? Absolutely. We will come to skill immigrants. We want more of them. 
But globally, our position at the People's Party is to have fewer immigrants. You know, just trying to do is increase that by 40%. Yeah. And only 6% of the population agrees with that. 40% of the population <laughs> wants fewer immigrants. So our policy is instead of going by 250,000 a year to 350,000 a year, we want an, an increase by 40%. We just want to go back to the average that we had under Stephen Harper government, about 250 a year. That would be our maximum. But the ratio, we must have a, a bigger ratio of, of skilled immigrants and, and fewer, like I said, refugees. So we're going to help the real people. But at the same time, I, our focus must be on skilled immigration. And globally, we want to be sure that these people who are coming here share our Canadian values and participate in our society. That's why when you have a skilled immigrant, a farmer that wants to come here and participate right now in our society, it's easier for that person to integrate our society and create value. And create values. So that's our policy. Globally, fewer immigrants, but the ratio in that ratio will have more um, skilled immigrants than we have right now. Awesome, Maxim. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. Yeah, and good luck. See you soon. Okay. Thanks. All right, so that wraps up this interview. I will leave links to the People's Party of Canada below. I'll leave another link too. Some of you guys might watch the Rubin Report. Dave Rubin did an interview with Maxime Bernier not too long ago. I'll leave a link to that too. You can check that out. And um, if you're a Canadian, please support these ideas because if we keep going the way we're going, even if it's the two incumbent parties, the Conservatives and the Liberals, we're going to expand the power of the government and we're going to lose more and more personal freedom. And uh, that's not a future that I want to be living in. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care.